Hi you folks, Surat here again, and it's time to continue the adventures of Professor Layton as he looks into the mystery of the Diabolical Box. Now, as you might expect in the sequel, a few things have changed, but not much. This game plays pretty much exactly the way the, the uh, first game played. But any real differences that pop up, I will point them out when we come to them. But for now, let's go ahead and start the Let's Play Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. And the first thing we do is enter the name, and it's just as finicky as ever here. It gets better later, but not for a good long while. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Okay, and here comes the one that usually gives me trouble. That's not an X. Not even close. Come on. Nope. There we go. Look less like a T than the other ones did. Oh well. So let's kick back, folks, and get ready for a nice long cutscene. There are tales of a box that brings death upon any who dare open it. Tell me, do you think those rumors could be true? Hey look, there it is! Deluxe. Just look at this room! Yes, I can certainly see why some call the Molin Teddy Express a cruise ship on rails. <laughs> this sofa's great! <laughs> now, don't forget, Luke. A gentleman pays attention to his manners in every setting. So what's the actual story behind the Elysian box anyway? All who open it die, huh? Hmm, sounds awfully fishy to me. Perhaps so, but we've seen it happen with our very own eyes. The answer is out there, Luke, but I just need to find it. We will. I know it. And so we must have a prologue, the Elysian box. And now it is time for an actual prologue, a flashback, if you will, to the events that led them, led Leighton and Luke to land on the Molentary Express. To my dear friend, Surat. There was a box that was rumored to kill anyone who opened it. At first, neither the professor nor I believed it. But all that changed with the arrival of a single letter. Luke, have a look here. Oh, what's that, Professor? It's a letter from my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Andrew Schrader. Is everything all right? My dear Herschel, 
Knowing you, I imagine you've already heard of the relic known as the Elysian Box. This strange antique is infamous for killing anyone who opens it. Truth be told, I'm a bit dubious of the box's murderous reputation. But you know how I am. Once something piques my interest, I simply must get to the bottom of it. That's why I'm pleased as punch to tell you that the elusive item is finally in my possession. What's more, I believe I'm on the cusp of unraveling a great mystery tied to this box. For the moment, let's just say I have a theory, though I haven't been able to prove it yet. Initially, it was my intention to finish my research before daring to open its lid. But I must confess that my curiosity is simply overpowering. In the unlikely event that anything should happen to me, please, finish the work I've started here. Your friend, Andrew Schrader. According to the postmark, this letter was sent two days ago. We should go pay the doctor a visit. I just can't shake the feeling that something awful has happened. Well, your intuition's usually spot on. I say we head out right away. And just like the last game, we have mysteries that will pop up as we play. So let's check out our first mystery, the Elysian Box. The Elysian Box is an antique said to bring death upon any who dare open its lid. According to rumors, the box has already claimed many lives and is feared in many parts of the world. Could this strange item truly exist? Well, apparently it does since this guy found it and is playing with it now. Luke, before we go, would you be so kind as to fetch my car keys? They're in one of the drawers on that desk. Sure thing, Professor. Erm... Um, if there's something you wish to inspect, Luke, simply give it a tap. And yes, we now have the tutorial to go through. Luke must find the keys to the Professor's car. Search by tapping on the desk drawers. Oh, let's see. We get to click up here. And look at all those thick books. No wonder the professor's so smart. You know, I have thick books too, and I'm not that smart, so... You, you might want to reconsider that statement there. And we can keep looking around. There's not much, you know... Uncomfortable chairs make you smarter. Okay. But anyway... As he said, we two tap to inspect things, we tap them. Just like in the last game. If we want to look at anything closer, we tap it. But he said his car keys were in one of the desk drawers, so it should be in this one. Oh, here we are, Professor. You got Layton's keys. You can find items you pick up in the Professor's trunk. Many thanks, Luke. Now, let's get moving. Layton's Lessons. Lesson 1. Moving. You do know how to move about, don't you, Luke? You bet I do. Let's see. First off, I tap the shoe in the lower right corner. Then I just tap one of the little arrows that appear to move in that direction. That's exactly right. Anytime you want to move, start by giving the shoe icon a tap. Go on, try it out. So we have a shoe here. We click the shoe. Arrow pops up, click the arrow, just like the last game. Nothing has changed yet. That's the way, my boy. One can't investigate properly without first doing a little legwork, as they say. I can't... Uh, I couldn't agree more, Professor. Now, shall we head off? So... Yeah, there's not much reason to tap around here. We can look. All the appointments and meetings office or a cafe. There's no doubt which office belongs to the professor, because only the professor has a top hat that big. Yes. And we can go back in, but there's no reason to. So let's continue, shall we? We still won't have hint coins until they're brought up. 
But the good thing is I don't have to explain all this, because it will explain it for me later. Luke, before we set out, it would be wise of us to confirm the location of the doctor's flat. During one of his visits some time ago, he was kind enough to leave me a map to his home. The map, as you can see, is a rather unusual piece of cartography. Look here, Luke. It's a map with gray squares all over it. Oh, how clever! The map itself is a puzzle. Professor, do you mind if I take a crack at it? I just know I can solve this one. And thus, we land on puzzle number one, Dr. Schrader's map, worth 10 picorats, which will be here to for referred as points, because I hate saying the word picorat, because I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm guessing. In the map to Dr. Schrader's home, several pieces in the center have been cut out. Restore the map by inserting the missing pieces in the correct spots. Touch a piece with your stylus to grab it, then slide your stylus to move the selected piece across the screen. You can't rotate the pieces. It may sound simple, but don't forget that you can move or remove pieces, including the one that's already in the middle of the map. So, we get started. Use your stylus to move objects on the touchscreen. When you're satisfied, tap Submit. A very new feature, or at least it's at least as far as I'm concerned, it's completely new. We hit Memo, and we can draw all over this thing. It allows us to do, you know, math, or it allows us to actually sit here and, you know, make nifty little marks all over the place. But yeah, we get a nifty little feature, like being able to sit there and, you know, scribble all over the uh, puzzles if we need to now. So, what we need to do now is figure out which, which pieces actually belong anywhere. And the easiest piece to place would be this one, because there's only one piece that actually has it in green next to it. So it obviously has to go there. Now... As you can see, this road doesn't mess up with this one at all, so we can move it out of the way. So let's see, which... Okay, that one matches up. That one matches up, or doesn't match up. That one doesn't match up. And this one does match up. So we neither need that one, or that one, in the middle. So let's see, what else we have here? Well, we also need one that... Nope, nothing matches up there. I don't think any of these will. Nope. This one? Yep, that one matches up there, so that means that has to sit here. And then this one... Yep, that matches up there. And that matches up right there. So there you have it. A completed map. Hmm, let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Ten points solved on the first try. Excellent work. Now, hop to it. You've got to get to Dr. Schrader's apartment. Okay, all about picorats. Picorats are points that indicate a puzzle's difficulty. The more picorats a puzzle is worth, the tougher it is. When you submit an incorrect answer for a puzzle, the number of points you can earn from that puzzle decreases. So think carefully before answering. Once you've beaten the game and saved, go to the bonus section and load your game file. From there you can enter the top secret area, where a number of fun extras are waiting for you. The more points you earn, the more extras you unlock. And yes, that is the reason you want to get a high score on the puzzles. You unlock extras, bonus puzzles, artwork, things like that. Excellent. With our destination confirmed, we are ready to pay the doctor a visit. Come now. And number one is now in our index and solved. I do believe we found the doctor's building. But which flat is his? 
That, I'm afraid, I don't know. But thinking on it now, the letter I received did mention something about this place. And this leads us directly into puzzle number two, the doctor's home, worth 15 points. Find Dr. Schrader's window from the details in the letter. In the morning, I often awaken to the sound of music drifting by, drifting in from a nearby flat. Looking out, I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window, take a single sip of my tea, and turn my attention to the morning sun. Not many flats in London have a view of the sunrise anymore, you know. So circle the window from which the doctor views the sunrise. So, let's see, first, he needs a flag fluttering outside his window. Okay. And this just teaches you how to circle an answer. Draw, you know, click, drag, draw, and everything else. So let's see, there's flag here, 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 and here. Okay. And turns attention to the morning sun. Well, let's see, that would kind of cut it down to here, or here, really, because they can't really see the sun because it's blocked out. And let's see, also awakens the sound of music drifting in from a nearby flat. Well, here's music coming out of this flat, so he's not here, so he must be all the way over here. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. 25 more points. 25 points. Now you know where it is, head for the doctor's home. Unless I'm mistaken, I think we found the right flat. Now, follow me, Luke. We're going up. Oh, I nearly forgot. Before we leave, let's review how to use this trunk. To open the trunk, just tap the icon in the upper right corner of the screen. Inside, there's all sorts of helpful information filed away under different icons. Touch an icon to use it. And to save the progress we've made during our investigation, just tap the icon marked Save. This icon is the Puzzle Index. Tap it to view all the puzzles we've encountered thus far. Solved puzzles are marked with a check, and those we've yet to finish are blank. Puzzles we've already finished can be replayed by selecting them from this screen. Also, the index shows the locations of unsolved puzzles we've tried so that we may revisit them. Tap the journal icon to display my personal notes on key story events. So, whenever you need to access the trunk, just give it a tap. Which we will do next time, because, you know, this video's run a little long. So, until then, take care folks. See you later.